Biggie's Chat House episode five, take one. What's up, guys? It's Big Biggie, not the little one, and welcome to Biggie's Chat House, <laughs> aka Casa de Bochinche. Guys, I know I've been MIA. Things have been so intense. Trust me, guys. I've been wanting to get here because I feel like this is the only place where you guys really hear what I have to say. So I've been dying to get back in front of this camera and really give you guys the full scoop of what's going on. It's been like three three weeks. We're like three episodes behind. But it doesn't matter because me and Teddy are going to clock it. The page has grown to 110,000. And me and Darylin have a surprise for you guys once it comes in the mail. We can't wait to show you guys. The internet has been speaking crazy. The blogs have been going crazy. You guys have been in the comments. And I love you guys so much. Because even when me and Teddy don't have the time to give you guys exactly what you want, you guys always defend us. Everybody has been talking about the chat house. The chat house has been going completely viral around the whole world. Sorry for the wait, but we're going to make sure that you guys get it on time every time. Things have been kind of crazy, but we're getting this new supercomputer that's going to let Daryl and edit everywhere that we go. So we're going to be having a lot of fun. Teddy, we look so good. So today, we're going to be drinking. We got the Dawn Reposado. Right, Teddy. Why are you hitting your head? What do you mean? You can scratch yours. I can't scratch mine. This costs too much. <laughs> so today, we're going to be recapping episode 12. I know I've been behind, but trust me, me and Teddy got a lot to say. We got our oranges. Hey, I helped. Teddy did help make these. This is sweet. It has a rim on it, guys. And we got two cups. Pour some more. Teddy, it's on the line already. Okay, I'll put a little bit more. Come through with the green shirt. Yes, I agree, Teddy. Anna's green shirt in the confessional looks really nice. <laughs> Suki, she said, get off my best friend head, bitch. Yeah, you better be jumping in for me like that at the reunion because it's about to get real spicy. It's getting spicy. <laughs> Period, Suki. You heard Suki. Right, Teddy? If she fights, I fight. Done. Only a little bit for you, Teddy. Teddy, we got some balls. Mm. Yes. It's not strong enough. You don't need no more alcohol in there. Play the episode, Teddy, and enjoy your drink before I take it away. Bombastic side eye. Right, right into this, because episode 12 is really going to grind my gears in a different way. Why is E.T. wearing those sandals? I know, right? Why is E.T. wearing sandals? She never came here to fight. Because she was upset because Tzatziki did a clip on live talking about, Oh, I want to hug you right now. I hug you right now, stupid ass. <laughs> yeah. To think you mocked her. Whatever. And then she wants to sit up over here with the- She still have them ZZs yes, with the on her head? Leave her CCs alone. Then she's just gonna keep cripping. She continues to wear this fucking headband. So boom. What you guys don't know is that in between this scene, right, Teddy? Let me tell you the tea, Teddy. Let me tell you the tea. Tell me, tell me, tell me. At the end of the day, let's really get into it. The only reason why Tzatziki and Scarface didn't like each other is because behind the weird shit that E.T. did before with Krishan. But right now, Tzatziki's not even really dealing with Krishan because you've seen what Krishan just put Tzatziki through. Tzatziki was being the adult here and was just like, you know what, Tzatziki I'm gonna... Tzatziki spared her. Right, spare her. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, she spared her or whatever. Now she's been online talking about Oh, well, you didn't want no smoke with me. You didn't want no beef. Like, first of all, you came to the scene in sandals. Bruh. You know you didn't come here to fight because you know you didn't want to fight Tzatziki. Then when Tzatziki handed over the purse. Everyone started Yeah, panicking. I know, my bad. I'm getting to that part. The part I was about to tell you. The person that actually saved Scarface was Scott. Oh, shit. Yeah, oh, shit. you can't see it there. When Scarface said, well, I need an apology, and Tzatziki handed over her back and said, well, what, you didn't hear me? Right there, guy said, oh, 
Tzatziki, you hurt her feelings. When Sky said that to Tzatziki, it made Tzatziki feel like, you know, like, damn, like, maybe I did just hurt her feelings. So Tzatziki let her go and didn't punch her in the fucking Yo, did you guys see the face of relief when Tzatziki gave Scarface a hug? Like, she was like... You couldn't wait to get a hug from Tzatziki, girl. Mind you, it took Sukiana and Sky to say something to save your ass. So don't make it seem like you was out here holding it down and holding down what you say because the way you act in your confessionals is not the same way you act in person. Wait a minute. Who are you? If you felt some type of way so hard, why didn't you just fight? The only reason why E.T. didn't get punched in the face is because Tzatziki don't want to make her sister happy. Oh. Let's be real. Because nothing would make Kashaw more happy than to watch Tzatziki beat the shit out of E.T. And Tzatziki don't want to please Krishan. That's the only reason why you didn't get your ass whooped. If anything, E.T., you should thank Krishan, Sky, and Suki for allowing you to not get your ass whooped that day. And take that damn tired ass Gucci scarf off your head. It's so annoying. Not the orgy. <laughs> A lesbian orgy. Yo, T's like, it's getting weird. Like, she wasn't doing it at all. Like, T was not doing it at all. And here comes Natalie. DJ Sky, T, come in. Bring it. Hey. <laughs> Animosity and whatever little thing Anna and DJ Sky got going on is so fucking funny to me. Because DJ Sky knows her part. Like, knows her place. She's like, yeah, no, I'm just a DJ. And then here goes Anna. No, yeah, because we're to my dad. We're to my dead. You're just a DJ. <laughs> Are they offending each other or not? Because, like, I'm trying to figure it out. Anna told DJ Sky, well, if you don't apologize, I'm going to slip this thing off, and we're going to fight regardless. And not for nothing, I'm proud of DJ Sky for apologizing about how she felt. Because it's true. You know, she attacked her. They, she didn't see it coming. They really didn't know what they was fighting about at that moment. I think it was really good that she apologized. The way Suki took Sapphire's arm off Smiley is hilarious to me. <laughs> Yo, and then everybody's face is so hilarious to me. Because the way Suki was like... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> because we ain't that cool with her yet. Like, well, she alright. Niggas just fought her. T looks over it. Right. T looks so aggravated when she gave that hug to E.T. Like, E.T. wants to be accepted so badly, bro. So then right after, it goes to this clip of E.T. and... Donald Duck. <laughs> Donald Duck. <laughs> I guess it's National Apology Day, and everybody done apologized, I guess, or whatever the fact may be. I guess Natalie wants Scotty to apologize, and I gotta see this, because this Scotty and Anna thing yeah, blows me. Blows me. Ana de mira, mejor me muero. Me cago muerta antes de dar un apology to this girl. <laughs> Yo, why is Zeus like that? <laughs> right when Anna said, oh, I told you I was going to beat your ass. And what I do? There goes Zeus with a clip of Anna going off. Is the way they act. Zeus, 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 Zeus
at that moment, my first season, I just didn't want to be seen in a weird light. Like, I just didn't want to. So why would I be afraid to catch my lick back on somebody when I walked in the house and caught my lick back on you? <laughs> Got it! <laughs> So obviously nobody's scared to get their lick back here. It was really about just how I want to make sure that my character stays a certain way because of the person that I am. Period. What are Anna and Scotty doing in the kitchen? Here goes Natalie. Scotty's about to throw the drink. She goes, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. <laughs> yeah, man. Please throw Please it. Please throw it. Anna's like, please throw it. I want you to throw it. They're here because Anna throwing chicken nuggets everywhere. But this is hilarious. The food went up. And not for nothing, I remember that day. Whose chicken nuggets was those? Because I was hungry as hell. And this was not handing out chicken nuggets. I remember that day. So bad. They should have took me and Roly into the kitchen. I would have been in there eating. <laughs> Why they ain't take me and Roly in the kitchen? <laughs> Why does Roly flatter herself so much? She's over there yelling, Oh, I came, she wanted to be a duo with me. I came for you, you came for me. You're a liar. Roly, I ain't never wanted to be a duo with you. That's why in my first episode of the Casa de Bochincha, I let you know everything about you that I did not like and as to why I did not want to be a duo with you. We can pull it up right here. The Casa de Bochincha, the first one you remember, the backwoods and the Dutch and the Dove cans. I never wanted to be a duel with you a day in my life. I didn't cling to Tommy. I didn't cling to nobody and I wasn't up your ass at all. And you would ask to smoke with me. Clock it. You would ask to be around me. Clock it. You would always be like, oh, Biggie, how come you didn't call me before you went to go smoke? Because I don't want to smoke with you. Oh, Why didn't you call? Oh, because I'm on the phone with my assistant. Matter of fact, I'm going to call my assistant right now. Then she said I clung to Tommy. I didn't even cling to nobody. I was always by myself. So, yeah, I would go see Tommy sometimes, speak to her about business things. Business things. We would always be recording each other's videos for like promotions and making sure that we both look good. Like there was times Tommy would like tap me up and be like, you know, fix yourself or help me pick out my outfit, stuff like that. Like me and Tommy wasn't always around each other. Then she had a nerve to be like, oh, me and the girls always had to tell you to let things go. What girls? I never even spoke to any of them girls, bro. I never really spoke to London. Never really spoke to Razor. To, obviously, we never spoke to the whatever her other name is. Scotty and everybody else was too busy all up Natalie's ass. So when did I ever do anything? I was always by myself. Remember, like, I think it happened like three times while we were on the phone. And I was smoking by myself, and Roly would be duck walking her ass up to me every single time. And what would I be whispering to you, Jen? <laughs> well, when she would try to smoke with you? Thank you. Go ahead. When she would try to smoke with me, and I'll be downstairs having business conversations with you. Hello? Did the. My phone died, guys, on Jen. Let's regroup. She wanted to hear like, how you sound when yeah. you moan? It's true. She wanted to hear how I sounded when I moaned. Like, I honestly think that Roly's just mad at me because I didn't want to curve. Clock it. Let's really be real. I don't want to deal with her. I don't want to eat her little <laughs> Like, I didn't want nothing to do with any of that. Like, this woman just walks around talking about, like, sex. Like, it's just so weird. Like, ugh. Like, who's fucking you, bro? For real. That shit just would make me feel so cringe. And so uncomfortable, bro. Like, ah. Uh... I would never want to be a duel with you. I can't even talk sexual with you. Literally, and I think that's really what it was with you. Like, you couldn't get through a certain barrier with me. I would have boundaries with you. And I think that's why you was just like, nah. I love me and con ella. Like, she's not opening up. Our beef is like a high school drama because you got nothing on me because I've never opened up to you. And then you keep saying, Biggie, I would always, oh, I came here for you, bro, every day. That's a lie, baby. That's a lie. Clock you it. was on my case because you used to... Smoke this trash ass weed getting delivered to you by this corny ass man that was supposedly fucking you in your bum. And you would tell me every day how you was getting, you know, and I would be getting disgusted and I would be like, uh, 
Like, why would I want to smoke with you? I'm not even having sex while we're on tour. You're having sex sucking dick, spin on shit, and you want to smoke a blow with me? It wasn't happening, bitch. I've been, cu I've been cutting you off slowly but surely, and that's why you don't like me. I never opened up to you, and you're mad about that. So you're just making up fake beefs. There's no way that you have this much anger towards me over another female that don't even like you. There's nothing for you to stand on. It's like weak, period. How'd she get up them stairs so fast? Right. How'd she get up the stairs up and down that quick, bro? It's not giving desperate. It's giving, I'm just speaking up on little weird things. I don't give a damn about riding on that PJ or not. I mean, is the fact that you're excluding me over the fact that I didn't want to be on Roly's side or I didn't want to play the game how Roly wanted me to play it, and that's the problem. If I would have played the game how Roly wanted me to play it, I would be in her position right now. Wait. Ain't those supposed to be your peoples? I'm thinking how's be supposed to be my peoples. And when Roly comes downstairs talking about that I something about the jet, because they keep focusing on the jet part. It's not about the fact of the jet, mommy. It's multiple things. And they only focused on that one part. Like, that's the part that pisses me off about this show. You only focus in on little things that try to make it seem like. Oh, Biggie's pressed about the jet. Oh, Biggie's pressed about materialistic things. No, it's not God, about materialistic please, no. things. I'm from the hood, man. Like, please. I could have went and bought a BBL and instead I spent it on a big ass chain and a necklace. I'm a successful woman. To rent a PJ is only like seven bands. I, I, I make more than that in one episode of a show. So why would I care? I can rent my own PJ. Like, no one, look it up, bro. People be like, oh, I can't do that. I can't afford to do that. Look into stuff. Look it up. It don't cost that much money. You just overdoing it as if though a PJ na my papa pa millionario na my pa millionario. Y'all nitpick on little things and try to make it seem like I'm a hater. I'm mad about that. Then here comes Roly's big ass coming around the corner. We fly high and you know we Camilla and Sky balling side eye. That shit was corny to me. It made me feel some type of way. Because it's like, we live in the same house. I get it, you and Roly are cool and stuff like that. But y'all don't live in the same house. You guys didn't think about me at that moment. Y'all only thought about yourselves and what was funny. And at that moment, it wasn't funny to me. So obviously, I'm going to say something. Because like I said, all last season, I let everybody else talk. And I just kind of stood there almost like I was kind of dumbfounded. And I just didn't say anything. When Camilla said it's giving desperate... Once again, desperate for nothing. Yo nunca, yo no soy una mujer. A mí no me duele nada lo que la otra gente hace. I can never be desperate. I could be a bum on the street. I'll be the richest bum in the world. Do you know who I am? I'm a walking billboard. Period. I've had more deals and been signed way more and have been under contract way longer than a lot of these females that have been on TV for over five years. Shout out to all my sponsors. Let's talk about the part... The fact that E.T. got up. She claims that she got up because I was giving her a headache. Question is, <laughs> why are you in the baddie house if you can't take a loud mouth? Right, Teddy. The only thing giving her a headache is that headband that she keeps tying to the top. It's so tight. It's so tight she can't breathe. That's what's giving her a headache, okay? Now let's get into it. Roly's mad because she's not the only pretty fat bitch on Zeus anymore. That part. You know you bear when you compose from any angle. Ooh. All the angles. Don't ever play with me. And I honestly feel like E.T. didn't want to say it right there and then. But she was actually just mad because I kept screaming, I'm not a replacement. And she's just sitting there like a replacement. I feel like that's really what it is with E.T. And then she just wanted to be a lap dog. Like always. Y'all kept trying to make it seem like I'm a lap dog, bro. Look at this woman. Do you see this? They're pulling her by her collar here. Like. And then y'all want to say... Biggie, why did you allow E.T. to push you and you didn't do nothing? Security literally grabbed my arm. You can see in this piece where security was literally jumped right in between me after she... Uh. You're mad she pushed no, you. No, I'm not mad that she pushed me. You don't see what this is giving? Like, please. Girl couldn't wait to have a conversation with me. Girl couldn't wait to have a conversation with me. Like, ew. This is the part that pisses me off. Mad security, bro. Right, mad security my thing is this everybody keeps saying biggie why did you allow et to push you how was i gonna do anything i was security had both my hands and i'm like yo what the fuck are you doing get off of me they didn't even let me like react it was almost like they knew she was gonna push me like they wanted to make her seem so lit so badly and this girl's really a cornball a cornball
Even Rody thinks E.T.'s doing too much. <laughs> Bopping your head super fucking hard. This conversation had nothing to do with you. It didn't give nobody else a headache but you. You're a weirdo. You just wanted to say something to me so badly. You're mad that nobody cares for you. The same thing you did to Krishan and them is the same thing you're doing to me. You're mad when nobody gives you attention. Clock I never had a conversation with you. Never even looked up at you. And you wanted my attention so fucking badly. There you go. You got to have a conversation with Big Biggie. Are you, are you happy now? Are you satisfied now? Did that make you feel better? You're literally blowing a vein in your forehead trying to tell me to quiet down because you're getting a headache. Does that make sense? Cloud chaser. They clipped me. Once again, let me tell you guys, what I said to E.T. right there really got her mad. I said to E.T., I said, E.T., you've watched multiple of your friends fight. She never jumps into her friends' fights, bro. She lets all her friends go head up and everything. So why are you jumping in in an argument with me and Rody? You're looking for a reason for someone to have to say something to you. You wanted me to fight so badly, but girl, you're a fighter. So what are you doing talking so much? I'm not a fighter, so I'm going to continue to explain myself. I always explain myself, and I'm going to speak how I feel because I'm not a fighter. I'm a businesswoman. I know how to work through a problem to create a solution. That's what a businesswoman does. You want to fight como dos cuatro perra, and that's what you're used to? You should have led with that. If you wanted me to shut up, you should have hit me right here. Right here. You should have hit me right there and lead with what you know. I led with what I know. I'm a businesswoman. But I'm going to speak how I feel and we're going to speak the conversation out to create a solution. But you can lead with what you know and that's supposedly whooping ass, right? So you should have led with that. And security got in between us and didn't allow me to do shit. But you already know what's up because it's never an issue. No one's afraid of you. And we was yelling just like this. The whole time. So if you wanted to swing you could have swung you're the fighter here not me drink responsibly drink responsibly because we got responsibility we just finished our drink and now we're gonna get some water going into this new clip of mariah lynn scotty and natalie i guess they're all speaking to um smiley and smiley she's still talking about this they're still talking about this chain you took their chain and their pendant what are you looking for? At this point, charge it to the game. Thirsty. Dang. I gotta stay hydrated. So I keep this skin looking so good. So I guess right now we're all going to the club tonight and we're gonna figure out what's going on because I was oblivious to all of this. Y'all know when they have these conversations, we be in separate houses. So this is what we was telling Smiley about when she's like, oh, what did I do to all of you guys? This is what it is. We don't know what's going on. Smiley's creating and having conversations, as you could tell, FaceTime conversations with other people. Didn't Mariah Lynn just tell Smiley, oh, you're going to see my sister soon, da 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 da, da about the chain and about whatever? Didn't she just tell her that? Do you think Smiley told us that? No. So we're just getting caught out of surprise. Okay, so the girls is all outside. Obviously, I'm not in this little piece because I argued with Sky, most likely, as to why they didn't put me in the next morning piece, but I did awake in the same home as these females. No one likes Scotty. So. <laughs> Dog. Rent a wig. You said it, not me. You said it, not me. They're recycling wigs. E.T., whose wig is that? And who swooped it on the side like... <laughs> <laughs> Why did E.T. open her mouth like that when Sapphire came in the room? She said... <sighs> and when Tzatziki said, hold this... Everyone started panicking. Right! <laughs> Everyone started panicking, kid. I don't understand how Scarface and Roly are like, you know, she's jealous. And I don't understand because you can see when somebody has insecurities. Holy. You literally express your insecurities every day about how you feel about people. You can see it. T didn't do that to you, and you was talking about, oh, you want to be pretty and fuckable now? And then E.T., oh, I don't like to do that. I don't like what she said about Roly because I don't bring down women. I uplift them. E.T., how do you uplift women? You come from a network that lets women beat the shit out of each other. And then you thought that it was okay to come to this network and bully people and beat people up. And because your crowd over there accepted it, you was the big dog. And now you're in a baddie's house. Here at the baddie's house, it's about equality. It's about defending yourself. It's about standing on your own business. It's about uplifting other women, making sure we all feel good about each other, making sure we all look good. And y'all 
is obviously doing that because y'all sharing wigs. Camilla's trying to tell me she feels like I came at Sky Fowl. I didn't come at nobody Fowl. And no one can stop me from feeling the way she made me feel. And it wasn't just Sky. It was Sky and Camilla that were singing the balling part and trying to make me feel stupid. For Camilla to tell me, oh, you don't have to do all that talking. You can fight. I can do whatever I want. If I want to talk it out and have a conversation about it, I can. Because that's the type of woman I am. So what? Everyone's mad at me because I'm, I'm, the, I'm the communicative baddie? Is that what you're saying to me? That we shouldn't have a communicative baddie? Because I communicate. I'm holding it down for my baddies that know how to communicate, know how to express themselves, and are emotionally intelligent. That's the baddie I want to represent. Now, everybody's on the bus heading to Acapulco. And Natalie decides to call the house in. And everybody says, hey, nah. My face looks so serious. I don't even understand. Like, I was just so over it. That's like, hey, I'm like. And then Natalie goes, I'm going to be really upset if somebody messes up the party or whatever, whatever. Then she goes, baddie, baddie, shot a clock. And then it's ah, fake assholes. Like, Natalie, you took shit every chance you get. I thank God I didn't say nothing when you first got on the phone. Because I already knew what type of energy he was on. Marylin is not exaggerating. Marylin was not exaggerating. The, the streets were full around the block. We couldn't even get the sprinters through. It was insane. Why would Scotty ever say, oh, fuck the other baddies. They don't have to get in. Then you wonder why I feel the way I feel about you, Scotland. Like, what is the problem? You said fuck the other baddies, so you don't fuck with Sky? So you don't fuck with Camilla? So you don't fuck with me? Cause the only one that I know that you don't like is Anna. So what about the rest of us? Bruh. You are so, we, we're gonna clock it. Clock, 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 clock. <laughs> then here goes fat ass. <laughs> it's daddy, daddy, blood time. Uh, 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 this is why Roly does not like me. This looks so cringe. It looked like they didn't even want to do it. It looked like E.T. was like... I didn't want to do all this concoction shit with her. So this is why she doesn't like me. You want to talk about how Smiley's ready for a fight? You're just like, you're ready to go to church. Roly! Don't know nothing about no good weed. Bye. That bitch smokes mid. The deodorant though? It was the deodorant. Someone stunk in that bus as to why Natalie said, We're not doing the musties and rolled it towards Roly no, first. No, no, no. Roly no, wanna no, look no, down like niggas no, are no, talking no, about. No. And then kept going like this to see. She said, We're not doing the musties. Wait. So you can invite people to the club with you? How come I never went? What you mean? I mean, I don't know. I guess you could invite people to the club. I don't know. I'm lost and confused. I guess E.T.'s having a small disagreement with somebody. She says that some man hit her. And even right here in these clips, you can tell that the guy was just very excited to meet all of us. Like... It's not his fault that he didn't know who Scarface was. Like, you know what I mean? You can tell there was no aggressiveness happening there. I guess there was a piece where Homeboy said, Big Biggie dupe and hit her over the head. So I actually have the full recording of that night. I have the real video. Like from the person, the man that was there himself and the woman that was there herself. I have it. They sent it personally to my phone. Can't wait for you guys to see it. I'm going to show it to you guys in the next episode. In the next episode, we're going to be recapping the fact that Marilyn's sister and Smiley went head up. And the fact that like you Roly amps up every single situation but doesn't even take care of her own is insane to me. Like I'm so over it. But it doesn't even matter because we're gonna be getting into the next episode. Thank you guys so much for being here. If you guys do want to see the full clip, make sure you come into the next episode that's coming in. We're so 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 sorry for the wait. And don't worry, we're gonna clock it. I wanna make sure we give a big shout out to Bella's on hair. Nails by Cat. And big shout out to Backpack Boys. Big, and big shout out to Victoria's Jewelers. Shout out. 
Shout out to all my sponsors that make sure that this YouTube is possible. I love you guys so much. Don't worry. We're going to be pushing out more, 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 more YouTubes, more content for you guys. We have a lot more different segments to come, and it's going to be a big surprise. We love you guys so much. Make sure you guys stay subscribed, and make sure you guys press that little bell on the side so you guys can be the first ones to watch it every time. I love you guys. Bye from me and Teddy. We'll see you guys soon. And cut.